the frantic pace was taking its toll on the band. By early 82, the ants were on their last legs. Band members were kind of complaining that it was all a bit him and a bit like we're all being told what to do. And yeah, there came a point where people were disgruntled and a bit fed up with the whole thing. But a lot of that came from fatigue. Instead of taking a break, I was kind of working into the next project halfway through one and then then going solo and I kind of didn't really want to go solo and, you know, everybody got just exhausted and just had enough, you know, and I, I would, I, I'd just keep going because I thought if I stop, everything will just fall away. It was almost like he'd got everything he wanted and then was panicking about losing it, even as it was happening, which to an extent might have contributed to him losing it because he was so worried about losing it, he kind of lost it. had split, although Adam still had Marco and, for the moment, they still had hits. But the papers he'd targeted earlier in his career were just beginning to target him and his squeaky clean image. If you're a rock and roll or an actor going out saying, love me, I'm the one, don't buy their records, buy my records because mine's the best record, I'm beautiful, you want to sleep with me. And then when they buy your record, you're very, very rich and successful and famous, you anyway, say, right now, fuck off, leave me alone because I fancy it today. So you can't do that. In terms of rock and roll culture, he was a little too clean. He never drank, he never took drugs, he never smoked. If you're prone to mental illness or, or are worried about it, one of the things you don't want to do is, is get out of your head all the time. You, you know, you, you hang on to normality. The way he made up for not drinking or taking drugs or anything like that was uh, enjoying the company of women, and I think he quite happily did that with a abandon. But Adam's attitude to drink went back beyond his first depression to his childhood as Stuart and to his relationship with his father. You know, my dad was an alcoholic. He had very bad problems. He'd always he had a very hard life. I suppose, what is it, beer is the saviour of the working classes, and I think I could swim in what he drank, really. Probably that's why Stuart doesn't drink. I think that's probably a reaction. Well, I don't really like to say this, but when he was famous, his father appeared from the, on the scene, having been gone for years, and that didn't make Stuart very happy either. In the mid-'80s, the papers finally got their story. I was in rehearsals, and... I got told, you know, your dad's been arrested for um, indecent uh, behaviour with a, a minor, and I was just completely, you know, because I had very strong, I have very strong personal feelings about any kind of child abuse, and uh, my family were hurting really bad. I just took care of them and um, let it run its course. Really, he went to jail, served his time, worked in the library. They let him out. Did it impact? How? It killed him, though. He died about a year after. Yeah, he got dead. By that time, the hits had dried up. The teenage girls had moved on, and after a brief, dazzling period of success, it looked like Adam would have to reinvent himself yet again. You know, he had 15 hits, number ones in America. Someone as sensitive as, as Adam, it's the worst thing when you realise your moment's over and you're so young, you know, uh, and you realise how, you realise how hard it was to, to achieve it in the first place. You know how hard it's going to be to achieve it again. You know, having that second act, that's going to be really hard. At 32, Adam Ant relocated. After exhausting everyone around him, he had finally exhausted himself. I didn't really know who me was for a while because you're just so hammered. You know, you're just sort of like punch drunk, you know. Once I went over there, bought a little house in Los Feliz and just got down to basics, starting just doing my own shopping, you know, just having a life. It's either a new beginning or the beginning of the end. Adam enrolled in acting school and was soon picking up parts in TV shows and B-movies. Things seemed to be going OK. Make it! Make me proud! But depression was once again stalking him. It would take him back to hospital and to the very brink of suicide. First time I had an inkling that maybe something not quite right was the day that Kurt Cobain died and I called him up about something 
And he said, have you heard about Kurt Cobain? And I said, yes, yeah, stupid twat. Like, you know, blows his own head off. Idiot. And he, and he said, no, it takes a lot of guts to do something like that. And I sort of thought, well, I didn't say anything. I said, oh, well, maybe. And I put the phone and I thought, what does that mean? That's a really odd thing to say. It will give me the greatest pleasure to kill you. But Adam was already starring in a real-life drama, more scary than any he'd acted in. I was living with my girlfriend at the time, and uh, then this Hispanic girl turned up one day. And she just stood there very seriously and just said, you know, I am the one you love. We are married. Um, this person you're with is, you know, a whore, and, um, you know, we're devoted. You know, don't... Uh, there's nothing you can say about it. Adam Ant was one of the first celebrities to be stalked. He'd always asked his fans to love him, but Ruth Marie Torres had a rare psychological disorder. She thought he loved her in return. The person who's suffering from erotomania actually believes that some other famous person is in love with them. They're convinced of this, they know it's true. That little hand gesture when watching them on TV, um, looking at the newspapers and seeing something he said, that means it's true. I went out one day and I'd came, I came back and the something wasn't quite right and I, I went into the bedroom and I saw the door was open and it just didn't seem right. I thought, oh, maybe it's the dogs, I don't know. But um, I went in the kitchen and there was this cake on the uh, kitchen table and it just said, uh, had a note saying, get the whore out of the house. They'll bombard 